To demonstrate how an automatic debugger works, we will create an empty Zamiacat project and name it Plasma. Next, we import the project files from our file system. Uh, you can download these files either from our web page or from the open course directly, where we have taken the Plasma design from. Nope. Plasma. Replace the build path and let's now build the project just to make sure everything's been inputted properly. Nice, no errors. So here's our top level test bench design. It's internals in the plasma core. Now, to debug Plasma design, we have taken its initial functional test described in Assembler and split it up into many small subtests, each target in some particular instruction, as you can see here, at instructions. So the initial test is quite long. Where it is. It can be converted into a set of process instructions, which look like this, for instance. So what we need to have for the debugger to work uh, is a long test split into small subtests. For instance, coming back to the MACAT, here we have all our subtests stored in the test directory. Each folder contains an atomic small portion of test data which looks like this, for instance, a small portion of code. As the initial complete test is stored over here in the project's root directory, quite a long one. But we won't need it anyway. We will use the small files instead. And finally, uh, here we have uh, two Python scripts, one for creating debug data and the other one for loading. Debug data is created in the following way. First, we rebuild the project. Then we run each test separately, each small subtest. Yeah, we skip some missing tests. So in each iteration, we first copy this small test to the root directory, then start the simulator and run it for some time until a possible error appears on the outputs. Then we collect some statistical data about the execution and create assignment and condition logs. We use these logs to create a report further on, both for, for assignments and for conditions. We store these reports into TXT files for further loading, so that further on we can load this debug data in a separate script. Here it is. This basically allows us to save time on re-simulations, so that we don't need to re-simulate, recompute the data. And before running the script, let us first introduce some bugs so that we can debug them. Let's take bus max file. Mm -hmm. Okay, let us switch to branches. For instance, here, we'll take this branch greater or equal and put it here. Just switch to branches. Well, in this way, we will introduce a couple of bugs right away. And what I mean is that, for instance, if you are using some other bug localization techniques uh, which make use of an explicit fault model, then these kind of bugs will most obviously be represented as a couple of faults. And multiple faults are always hard to be detected by methods which build explicit fault models. So now we should have two faulty branches here. Next, we run the incremental builder by saving the file, just to make sure everything works fine. And run the script. Here you can see the built-in simulator working in the background. Zemeka does provide graphical user interface for running the simulator for chasing signals, for instance, for viewing VCD files. 
and simulator tab is right next to the console tab where we are now. But the whole core of Zamia Cat, including the simulator of course, is completely Eclipse independent and can be run from the command line directly. Just the way we are doing it right now actually, from within the script. Right, done. So now you can see already some highlighting here. But let us first start with the markers tab. In the markers tab we have a list of suspicious code items with the corresponding resources, that is files, line numbers and also the suspiciousness rank. You see those values of S. The highest possible rank is 1. So here are two files containing items with the highest suspiciousness rank. For instance, um, bus marks where we have introduced the bug. Um, we can double click it and jump in. Now we see that these two lines are marked red. And these are not the only lines which are marked red, as you can see from this overview ruler. Um, so basically a designer has to go through this list of items himself and figure out where the actual error is. That means we do not propose a solution, we do not propose possible fixes for errors yet. This is actually quite a hard task for a real large design. So now if we go where the bug is, for instance, <coughs> Uh, we can select a region around these red items and reveal the suspected conditions which lead to these assignments. And now in addition to the assignment statements uh, we have our branches highlighted too. Uh, suspicious conditions and assignments are actually computed completely independently from each other. We just reveal conditions in the selected region. So, for instance, we can select the whole file and show the suspected conditions in the whole file. You can see that a lot of conditions are marked. And green are those which have been simulated, red are those which are highly suspicious, and the yellow are suspicious but not so much as the red ones. Let's now jump to the control file and see that in some files um, this one is a completely clean, completely correct file. Uh, it still has some items in it and they all reside in the same region. So there are basically some suspicious conditions which lead to these regions. And you see that only this region is now covered. But if we select the whole file, then we can show conditions for the whole file. You see that most, most of the file has been simulated and only some small portions are marked as suspicious. What else can we do? We can, for instance, clear all files from highlighting. And we can load the debug data back. Take it from disk and load it into Zamia Cat, which will, under the curtains, analyze the data and visualize it as highlighting of suspicious items. And all the coloring should come back. So, what we do, we rerun the script. And all the highlighting is back with all the suspicious code items. So this is a simple demo of how you can use scripts to do something useful with Zamia Cat. In this particular case, we were using simulator to create a simple debugger. Simulator and a little bit of science.